Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, we're talking about, um, we're talking about Zad, bro. Okay, now, now I'm hearing it out loud. Today, we're talking about what happened nine years ago when someone ordered some sweet ass dominoes, and they got a lot more. That was it, you know, until it wasn't, because after seven whole years of silence passed, I mean, that's how it looked like on the surface, at least. A woman named Erica, she got something she, um, she didn't order. Make sense? Didn't think so. But it will once we, uh, give it a give. <music> to Ohio we go. Downtown New Franklin is where the party's at. Roughly 14,000 people live in this small city in Northeast Ohio. A nice, quiet place to live. Maybe too quiet. New Frankie is part of the Akron metro area. You got a lake called Turkey Foot, which I enjoy. And it is, according to its own website, a 100 safest cities in America city. Yeah, but you could be number 100. Hmm, not quite so sure about that. Looked on uh, quite a few of those lists, actually, no dice. I think they were voted one of the 100 safest cities in America around the same time this website was created. New Franklin, population 14,000, located in the southern part of Summit County. It is the home of Portage Lakes. Kind of what I would call like a, a nice little restful, sleepy vacation spot. Mavoto, a California real estate broker, says it's not only sleepy, it named New Franklin the most boring city in Ohio. Not surprised. See, for once, I don't have to make fun of a place, as I usually do. The news does it for me. So back in 2012, on a warm summer's night, the 20th of June, a call came in for a delivery to your local uh, Domino's pizza pie shop. Thanks for calling Domino's pizza. The Domino's, and there was a few, was at 4037 South Main Street, Akron, in Green, across Turkeyfoot Lake from New Franklin. Someone was looking for a large half and half pepperoni mushroom. Sounds good, gives a bite there. This call uh, came in about 11.40 p.m. Just as they, you know, they were looking to get, you know, closed up sooner rather than later. They closed at 12 a.m. And so, you know, this would be the last delivery for the driver that Wednesday night. The caller was a woman and she was looking to have the pizza delivered to a business parking lot on West Turkeyfoot Lake Road. Working late, burning the midnight oil? We'll meet you there. The delivery driver would be Ashley Biggs. Ashley was 25 years old, born in 1987, and she was in a long-term relationship with her girlfriend Brittany, while also raising her young daughter, Grace. Ashley, she had served previously in the US military. So she took the pizza, headed off to, you know, quickly deliver it, be right back, finish up your shift. Well, uh, over an hour later, the Domino's was closed, and her co-workers were still... They were still there, waiting for Ashley to return. Calls to, you know, the person the delivery was made to went unanswered, and calls to Ashley got no response. This was at 12.45 a.m., and it was a four-minute drive to where the delivery was due at 6.47 West Turkeyfoot Lake Road. And so, with nothing... They called the police to report something was wrong. Police then, you know, followed up with where you know, she had been sent to, the delivery location. It was just a regular office building, you know, along one of the roads. The business was on a more remote side of town, and when the police rocked up, all the lights were off. Nobody was home. There was no car at that location, but blood was on the pavement there had certainly been a violent struggle. Police quickly came to the conclusion that Ashley, she had been lured there, you know, but by whom? Or, you know, uh, who? A few hours later, as the sun arose, a car was discovered in a cornfield in Chippewa Township, 20 minutes from New Franklin. Police were called, and upon arrival, they, well, they had a goo inside the car, and in the back, along the floor, was Ashley Biggs. She had been tasered 
in the back, you know, to be subdued. And then it was a uh, zip tie around the neck. And that was the end of Ashley Biggs. Blood was everywhere. Taser wires on her. Her wrists zip tied. And a four foot long zip tie was around her neck. Her face purple. And well, missing Domino's driver and Domino's stuff everywhere in the car, they were pretty quick to realise who the deputies were looking at. And the police were swiftly told who could, probably did, do this. Ashley's ex, a fella named Chad Cobb. Chad was in the middle of a very bitter custody dispute with Ashley over young Grace, their daughter, seven years old at the time. Chad Cobb was 30 years old, and he lived in the same county, Summit, as Ashley. He had had a brief relationship with Ashley. Didn't last too long, you know, things went from amicable, hey, obviously, <laughs> wink wink, to, like, not that, very quickly. See, after Ashley gave birth to their daughter, she... She straight up just joined the military and, like, cut all communication. So Chad, he was given custody of Grace. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, Ashley just like comes back into their life and is like, yep, that baby's mine now, essentially. Only, you know, Grace wasn't a baby anymore. She was like six years old, having just grown up with her dad. The judge gave custody of young Grace back to Ashley, and that led to this. Now, Chad was married to a woman named Erica Leon. Now, Erica, whatever doesn't kill me, had better start running, Stefanko. But, you know, we'll get there later. Uh, and they had three kids together. So Ashley's girlfriend, Brittany, you know, she immediately told all of this to the police about the custody disputes and how things were, uh, you know, in the toilet, uh, essentially. And then, didn't it just so happen that Shad, ah, oh, man, he owned a cable installation company. You know, the kind that might just happen to use four foot long zip ties. Seven years before this, Chad had pled guilty to domestic violence against Ashley. And, at the time of the murder, Ashley had a protective order against him. So, it was on the 21st of June, the same day Ashley was found, that Chad was arrested. He was found hiding in the woods behind his parents' gaff. A search warrant of his home was undertaken. And on a few of the tools was Ashley's blood. Case closed. And by the way, I never learned what happened to the pizza, the half and half pepperoni mushroom. A written man accused of killing his child's mother appeared in court today. Chad Cobb was arraigned on aggravated murder and kidnapping charges. In June, police found the body of Ashley Biggs bound and gagged inside a vehicle in New Franklin. Cobb and Biggs shared custody of their six-year-old daughter. Court records show their battle over how often Cobb got to see the child was heating up. Cobb will be back in court later this month. Chad Cobb was charged uh, here with a first-degree murder. Death penalty, you know, could have been on the cards, but uh, Chad, he, he instead, you know, he, he took a plea, pled guilty, and he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And that's, that, that's the end of that chapter, you know, if that was the end of the story. It ain't. Chad Jacob's life was effectively over. He was sent away at a young age and would never set foot on free soil again. But there was like just a little bit more. Because the caller was female. A local detective named Michael Hitchens continued to monitor Erica Leon. He believed she was involved and that Chad hadn't acted alone. Monitored her as Chad, well, he had nowhere to go. But she moved on with her life. She divorced Chad. Then, later, married one of Chad's childhood friends, Mike Stefanko. There was no, there was no evidence at all against Erica though being involved in what happened to Ashley and Chad, you know, he'd be questioned time and time again, said nothing. The phone that had made the call, that had, you know, made the delivery call, it was a burner phone. And that was, that was traced, it happened, it, it was bought in a Walmart just down the road. And the day it was bought, well, there was CCTV of Chad, Erica and their kids. But her being there, you know, when it was bought. So that wasn't, wasn't enough, you know, to really put really anything on Erica. But something was, was enough for Chad, right? He was furious. You know, when he got sent away, he was like to his beloved, Oh yeah, it's fine, move on, you pretend I'm dead. You know, go have a great life without me, look after our children. 
I'll never forget you. You're not fucking marrying my best friend though. And Grace, who is now living with Erica as her mother was dead and her dad was in prison, she began to tell Chad, you know, write letters to him saying, Erica was a real bitch. Abusive uh, t towards her, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally. It's horrible. Around this point, a few years, four, in the slammer, and seeing the shit that was going on, he thought, uh, here, listen. Had enough of this. He decided to maybe have a bit of a chin wag with the police, and he said Erica was there. She was there that night, and you need to speak with my mother, Cindy Cobb. She might just so happen to have a little some something for you. Like, I don't know, a secret recording maybe? See, Cindy was also not uh, too keen on Erica. Chad had four kids, which Erica had custody of, and Erica did not let their grandmother see them all too often. So, one day, Cindy invited Erica over. Have a drink, you know, patch things up, shoot the shit. Cindy had a recording device. This was in March 2014, only one year, only one year after Chad Cobb was sent away for life. Cindy kind of did this of her own volition. She would say, kind of left the recording there, didn't really expect anything to happen, you know, just insurance for my son who will never see the light of day again. She would actually leave it in a safe for four whole years before finally handing it over to the police. I mean, I don't know what she was going to do with it, saving it for a rainy day or something. So in 2018, the police had that recording, and Chad, he basically came out and said, Listen, I'm more than happy to testify. I'll yap away about her, not about her. And there was no deal uh, with Chad for any kind of reduced sentence or anything if he did testify against Erica if they arrested her. But he said, yeah, I still want to do it. I think he was just really pissed off seeing her life outside while he was, you know, not. Those sirens caught up with her seven years after she made a phone call, when Chad admitted she had been part of the murder plot in November 2019. So, Erica was arrested. You know, but, but it was so dicey, because could they prove that Erica was a part of Ashley's murder plot, you know, beyond any kind of reasonable doubt? Ordering a pizza ain't against the law, and one of the witnesses was a convicted murderer. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a person who, after eight years now, after never mentioning it before, until really about 2017, he's stewing in that prison. And now he's trying to get out from under full responsibility. Because he wants to drag somebody else down to his level. He wants to get out of prison early. He wants his sentence shortened. 
The defense said Erica was never a part of anything. It was all chat. Fucking bingus over here. And there was no DNA evidence pointing to her having taken part. But I mean, she spoke about it at length on that secret recording. She followed step by step everything he told her to do. But they had alcohol, the defense said. And you know, did you know? Did you get a lot of this? After Chad was sent away, Erica became a heavy drinker. So you gave her some vodka? Something spicy? This is, a, this is a load of shite. Plus, Cindy had it for four years before handing it over. Hmm, interesting. This murder of Ashley Biggs could not have happened if Erica Stefanko and Chad Cobb did not work together. It was planned together and it was carried out together. And then, there you go, tis himself. Chad Cobb showed up and was mad to have a go at ex Erica. Even though you never said anything, in 2012 or 2014, correct? I'm sorry, what's the question? And I remember she ordered a pizza. And I remember it struck me as bizarre because she ordered a half pepperoni and mushroom pizza. A short time later, Ashley showed up. Ashley did not leave that parking lot alive that night. Yes, sir, that is accurate. During the course of your criminal prosecution, were you ever aware that Mike and Erica started a relationship? Uh, yes, sir. So now, eight years after you murdered Ashley Biggs, you're now saying that somebody else was involved. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you're asking me, was Ashley in her car when I drove it to our bridge in, in, in the field? Yes. Yes, sir. Was Ashley already dead? Yes, sir. Did you strangle her? I'm not the one who strangled her, sir. Would you please repeat that? I am not the one that strangled her, sir. I see. So now you pled guilty, and now you're saying that you didn't kill her, is that right? Yes, sir. It's actually one of the funniest things about this case. You know, we start off as a perfect plot for custody reasons, which we see time and time again. And then as the years went by, it just became like a family drama. A revenge against his wife, you know, who got off of this scot-free. He said that not only was she a key participant by being the one to lure Ashley out to that remote parking lot, but she was also there the entire time, watching as Chad murdered Ashley, helped him clean up and get rid of the body. Then when they dumped Ashley's car a county over, well Erica followed and then drove Chad away from the scene. Ashley and Chad's daughter also testified that she overheard Eric ordering the pizza from Domino's, and essentially ordering Ashley's death sentence. Do you have a memory of Erica making a phone call? Yes. Tell us about the phone call. I know she ordered a pizza. I don't remember what she said that was on it. And I can remember that she did not use her name. Do you remember what name she did use? No. She also said how Erica was essentially just a giant bitch who um, once made the Grace, the daughter, uh, eat dog shit. She was mentally abusive and physically. She would, I remember she would hold me on the ground and she would hit me. And then she also before made me eat dog feces. So let's talk about that. Do you know why she made you eat dog feces? Because she was jealous of my relationship with my father. With your, with who? With my father. With your father. A few other things came out about Erica. And there was a friend who testified saying that Erica had hacked into Ashley's social media profile, was stalking her, was furious at her for, well, what she said was destroying her and Chad's relationship. And then after Ashley was killed, Erica, uh, 
decided to take a big shit on Ashley's grave. Did she talk about after Ashley was murdered, anything she may have done um, in regards to Ashley? Um, she did say that after, um, after everything had happened that she would visit Ashley's grave. And at one point I know that she had, um, she had said that she had defecated on her grave. And why did she say she did this? Um, quote unquote, for all the shit she put us through. What the shit? What is it with her and Pooh? Fucking loves it. It took the jury three days of deliberation to reach a verdict. She was found guilty of murder. The jury has found the defendant, Erica Stefanko, guilty of the offense of aggravated murder. Now, they didn't find her guilty on everything, which essentially meant that they didn't believe she had touched Ashley or been there, but that making the call was as good as. Your Honor, if it is healing and helpful to Ashley's family and friends, to Grace, think of me as the monster. If it is helpful for Cindy Cobb to exonerate her child for his own actions by putting the blame on me, if that helps these people, particularly people who are victims, I can accept that. I was most certainly my worst self during my relationship with Chad. I have never been a hateful person. Defecated on her grave. Erica, at 38 years old, was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 30 years. And there you have it. A, you know, a horrific event and something that, like I said, it started over custody and we see them again and again. But it eventually led to, after years of silence, uh, well, shit, <laughs> literally. Catching up with Erica, her horrible secret was, was finally revealed. And it seems like something she knew was going to happen, that this was inescapable. Good old Chad, he wasn't going to sit back and just let this happen. Like I said, like, what started out as one thing just became like him just really pissed off. <laughs> raging inside there. So he was, you know. And Erica had some weird... Obsessions with poo. Well, there you go. Pete's time gone wrong. I mean, if it wasn't for the poo stuff, I'd be starving right now. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here uh, with me and watching this whole video. Uh, here, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next one. Till then, please, please take care of yourselves. I love you. Bye, care.